Hello. I wanted to fit in, so I'm going to give you a tour of all of my stuffed animals. First off, we have Willow the lemur, who misses you very, very much. And we have, let's see, adjust lighting, okay. That is an owl that Camden gave me years ago when we were part of this zoo sort of trio. Then there's a froggy that my cousin gave me. And then there's a ducky that's made out of a sock. And that's from Auntie Duck, Jessica, or her mama duck. And there's... I don't even know what he is, but he's really squishy and, like, stress ball -y. I think Justin got him when we were, when he went to um, Europe. And there's Nancy Pearl, the librarian action figure, who is fantastic. And assorted pictures and duckling things and condom lollipop. Things like that. But yes, I wanted to share my stuffed animals, too. And... I like the ponytail. It makes you look like... It makes you look colonial. I'm not sure why. Maybe the combination of the collared shirt with it. But, you know, I kept, I kept expecting you to pop on a powdered wig. I got a kid in, a, in um, one of my film classes whose hair is long enough for a ponytail, but only the back. And everything on the side. They could be his hair flanks. Compound word. Uh, they all spill out, but he insists on wearing the ponytail every day. Mind you, his hair's pretty straight, so it doesn't quite look as poofy as yours, so maybe it works better. I don't know, I haven't seen yours go with your hair flanks down. Well, my little language nerd, that sounds like quite a daunting task for that entire year of language. Um, the Anglo-Saxon you've been taking trans um, focuses more on translating than actually writing your own and speaking it, right? I mean, if... You know, it's more dabbling. Uh, if Latin, if the Latin, Old English, Middle English, French, if they're all going to be the same way, then maybe it's not so bad. But that just seems like a lot of work. But then, if you're going to be, if you want to teach rich kids, then you're, you may as well start right now getting used to doing tough stuff. So I took my Native American film exam, um, yeah, not yesterday, Tuesday, and... There were a couple of bits where I didn't uh, that I didn't know, like well, okay, only one thing that I really really didn't know. He was it was one of those film terms that we hadn't actually discussed in class, and it was a match. Remember, I'd asked I'd asked you because you had your film book, and I had no idea. I had no idea, but I wasn't about to leave the question blank, so I wrote, "Small wooden stick with sulfuric fire igniting tip." Hopefully, I'll get you know half credit or something. Also. One of the movies that we'd watched for the class was in essay question, uh, four or five essay questions, and the main character was Dr. Something, but I could not remember his name, so I just kept referring to him as the Doctor, the Doctor, the Doctor. And you don't know Doctor Who, but it's named as such because he doesn't give out a real name. He's known by everybody as the Doctor. So... I had a fun time writing those essays. <laughs> kind of humming do 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 the entire time in my head. <laughs> and speaking of Doctor Who, I'm bringing up some. And I have a question, something that doesn't set with me. An issue regarding their time things, because the Doctor is a Time Lord. There used to be a whole race of them, but the Time Lords and these robot -y dudes called the Daleks had this massive war, and all of the Time Lords were wiped out except for the Doctor. And... So the Doctor's been going through years and years and years and whatnot, go, um, you know, just traveling through time and dipping in here and playing around here and fixing something here and whatnot, and it brings into mind that Diane Duane's So You Want to Be a Wizard series, 
where the lone power in the very first book, you know, the the devil, etc., uh, God sort of thing, the lone power was convinced to go good. But because he exists in so many timelines, because he's dipped in and out all the time, because he just doesn't solely... Because he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. And sometimes, you know, starting then, he's good. But there are all those other times when he came in through history and the future and such, where he was still bad and did things. So even though in that first book they set him right, they still you know, go through the books and they still have to battle him and defeat him because he had gone to there initially, you know, way long, way long ago. And so in Doctor Who, I keep thinking that one of those old Time Lords from, from way back when, before they were all wiped out, shouldn't one of those old Time Lords come across the Doctor at some point? Just because at some point, way, way back in the past, he or she must have done it and come up here and dabbled in this time period because he mostly sticks to the main events. You know, not only on Earth, but everywhere too. Every other places too. So I I feel like that's some bit of discontinuity. It may be, you know, I, time theorists and string theorists and all can probably... <laughs> explain it to me, but I don't happen to know any of them. On a completely unrelated note, in Shaver's class yesterday, uh, my friend Bryson and I were talking about surreal serial serial killers and how they would involve, like, people who... No, actually, it wouldn't be people who... Those would be the entire thing, I suppose, judging by the semantics. But they would be these, like, We've got, you know, like the first thing, surreal. You think of um, Dolly, Salvador Dolly. And he's got his all warped clocks. Then he goes, cereal is in the food. So imagine, like, warped Fruit Loops that kill people. Surreal, serial, serial killers. It ought to be patented. It would make a really good comic book. And finally, I wanted to point out these creatures that I learned about yesterday called pea aphids, who, you know, they're insects, and they can, they're like the gray matter of the animal universe. They can reproduce sexually or asexually, they can breed either winged or unwinged babies, and they've also got, um, the symbiote. It's this, um, little bacterial symbiote sort of thing that digests what it eats, uh, plant sap, but it holds on to all that plant sap, like it doesn't spread it into the aphid. And it's on the outside, and this, like, this little bacteria's got all its genes, too. So, like, everything crucial to the aphid is stored on the outside of its body by this little bacteria thing, and they were really, really cool. That's the picture that we opened up with today, rather than a trivia fact. Because this is 30 seconds to 3 minutes, depending on how much uh-ing I cut out, of trivia. So, there we have it. And that's about all she wrote. So, cheers, oh captain, my captain. Honey, I'm home and I brought AIDS. Okay. Brought who? AIDS. 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 AIDS.